Hi, and welcome to Feature Fridays. My name is Guy Bartram. I'm the director of our field marketing for our cloud service providers. And today I'm joined by Showbit. Welcome, Showbit. It's your first time on Feature Fridays. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell people a little bit about yourself? Wonderful. Thank you so much, first of all, Guy, for inviting me over. Um, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening to the fabulous audience here. A um, little bit about myself. I've been in um, you know, VMware and I've come almost two and a half years or so. I work as a product marketing manager in the uh, in uh, vSphere and, pri and private AI. Uh, so I lead VMware's private AI product marketing um, at this point and led all the launches last year in, in uh, VMware Explore, Barcelona, and recently VMware Private AI Foundation with India. I was really excited to come uh, speak in this uh, forum today. Wow, so you've been really at the, the forefront of this then. Uh, I mean, this, this hasn't been a quiet time for anyone, but it certainly has been a busy time for you. Um, yeah, I mean, the private AI announcement last year, that really caused a, quite a big market stir. Um, and it's, you know, we've seen, I mean, from the service provider perspective, right, we've seen, um, obviously, you know, containers and bringing Kubernetes into the fold, we've then seen GPU, DPU coming in, multi-tenanted GPU even with uh, VCD, and all of the NVIDIA, you know, application catalogs and uh, uh, GPU um, uh, drivers and, and capability we have now packaging that ready for Tanzu infrastructure. There's been a lot going on in that space. <laughs> Absolutely. Very, very exciting last one year for sure, right? It's, um, I think, a pretty cool journey. Our so, you know, previous CEO, Raghu, had made the edict that he wanted Private AI launched uh, as soon as possible at Las Vegas last year at Explore Vegas. And we literally just had three months from start to finish, right, for such a phenomenal uh, like a cutting edge product where we, we don't even understand actually a lot of stuff yet, right? Like it's a very fast evolving space. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been a fun, fun, well, fun wild ride. Sure. <laughs> Great. Well, listen, thanks for coming on and um, you know spending some time with me to talk about um, private AI and you know obviously uh, Nvidia being a core component of that as well and our other. Uh, kind of OEMs who are, we're going to talk about in the future and, and, and in in this session around what they're delivering. So, um, Shabit, why, why don't we start from the, the top and just kind of talk through what, uh, you know, AI is all about, uh, you know, positioning the, the picture for our partners here. Absolutely. So, you know, AI has been around for a while, like 40, 50 years or so, right? If you start thinking about, you know, credit rating, fraud, um, you know, things like that, like small targeted um, models, small targeted use cases, so to speak, they've existed for 50 years or so. So AI is not brand new. What's brand new is generative AI. Generative AI means generating text and images, uh, you know, based on prompts that the user is giving. And so that has been the game changer. So what's brand new with generative AI? The total economic value is tremendous, $4.4 trillion. What that means is for, um, and this, by the way, McKinsey got done survey, right, an, an mm -hmm. estimate, in which they did 63 use cases across the industry, all the large ones like code generation, you know, marketing, for example, content generation, et cetera. A, it was a very expansive review that they did and said across uh, 63 of those use cases, which is basically covers a vast majority of what generative AI applications can be do, the total amount of potential uh, is going to be $4.4 trillion of economic value. So that's the benefit that enterprises are going to get from this uh, generated um, um, you know, benefits and productivity benefits, which is the huge value here, right? And yeah. if you look on the left hand side, each one of these departments are going to get value from it, right? Whether it's marketing, supply chain, et cetera. And, um, you know, it's the way we do that is basically just prompts through your natural language, right? English, French, whatever language you speak, right? And then using these large language models to generate answers. That's that's the core value of generative AI. Phenomenal amounts of productivity benefits, right? 
Mm. Um, I think that's the key value there. And and the key thing here is actually just building those those LM, LMs, the large language models, but building them on your data. So they're kind of learning everything about your enterprise and then using this prompt-based kind of capabilities able to construct results that are meaningful in context and and that's where i think people have to, to worry right it's like how do i train how do i teach ai to learn about my infrastructure or learn about my my business without exposing information externally absolutely that's a great segue to why you know what what the challenges generative you know enterprise are seeing spot on there greg guy is large language models are generated by enterprises, businesses, colleges, educational universities have done a great job in the beginning at least. Uh, but the key here is you have to give it a whole bunch of your domain data, your enterprise data, and mm -hmm. that generates a lot of challenges, potential that enterprises are exp uh, you know, express to us. Biggest one being privacy, right? Is you have uh, the ability to, you know, to improve your answers, you have to give it a whole bunch of your data, right? A lot of your data, right? Uh, and if you start thinking about what that means is the more data you give to your generative AI model or large language model, and right? The more better and vastly improved answer you're gonna get when your users or you know employees are actually trying to find some sun, find some answer. Yeah. So, but if you give them a lot of data, you know, all of these concerns come in. What if somebody put in this information in an open model, which comes up a lot for our discussion when we talk to enterprises. What if you put in customers' private data inside um, a large language model? Can somebody with the wrong access get inside of it? So there's a very closely three pieces. Do you want, uh, you know, you want to make sure that only the right people are able to access it as well. Well, that's where the access comes in. This is just, Huge amounts of concerns enterprises have. They're very excited about it, right? Extremely excited about the potential of generative AI. But these are all the concerns that it mentioned to us. And I guess this, this is the uh, <laughs> the clue here is in the name, right? Uh, private intellectual property, private data, private access. So you know, privacy being key, and VMware's private AI solution being uh, the answer to these questions, naturally. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then privacy being one, right? Primary concern. There's also other challenges customers talk to us about, right? And, uh, you know, VMware Private AI, like you said, exactly, Guy, is, is based where you give customers the uh, benefit, enterprises the, the big uh, peace of mind that their pri private and secure data is not going to go away. And we'll, we'll share a little bit more here in a second. But these are the other challenges as well that they talk to us about. The fact that they want to make sure that they have the ability to switch to different large language models when they, as the need arises, they may be a healthcare specific one. Then next, next year, there may be a marketing specific one, a finance specific one. And you could envision like five years from now, there's hundreds and maybe even a, you know, a few hundred large language models operating in a large enterprise, right? Yeah. In different, different use cases, different applications. Now, when you have a fast evolving space, there's also concerns about cost. That's a big concern customers have, is I don't want to get into a cost spiral where I wish I can't control. Uh, uh, to improve the answers of AI and Gen AI, you require constant amounts of iterations, constant amount of training is the specific term we use for that. Uh, training is very, very high, high on performance. Uh, and nowadays, inferencing is getting there as well, becoming more demanding on infrastructure and performance. And finally, compliance. To give your improve the answers, you need a lot of data that you have to give to your Gen AI model, which brings up all bunch of Gen, you know, compliance concerns. One of, one of the aspects I'm not sure if you've got it on any of the other slides, but I'm going to throw it out there now is skills and resources. Um, you know, we're we're seeing certainly with the you know the vcf story that we're talking about with our cloud providers the managed services they provide being essential for customers enterprises to realize the best investment you know the best from their investment in vcf um and from what i've 
read in some of the analyst papers as well, there's also a massive skills shortage in AI and data scientists and, you know, the guys who create these models or these extensions to existing models. Um, that's something where service providers, you know, do have skills or they know and have partnerships with um, smaller operators and um, integrators that can help um, really achieve, not only provide the infrastructure and the performance and the, you know, the compliance and security aspect, but also the manpower to, to deliver this. And one, one other key thing I think often gets missed from the, the conversation is once you start uh, becoming reliant on uh, machine learning and algorithms, your business starts operating on them. And that then imposes operational risk to you when you don't know how those algorithms are behaving necessarily and your business is actually reliant on them. So when it when it goes wrong, it, it it's complete catastrophe time. Uh, so that high high end kind of AI ML operations is also a key area where service providers can help. Absolutely. I think uh, you nailed it right there as an ex MSP, a big MSP employee, right? At one point, mm -hmm. I have a lot of affiliation with MSPs, so it's CSPs. And uh, the skill sets that CSPs, GSIs bring, system integrators bring are extremely critical to our story for sure, right? You spot on right there. Another way to optimize cost is to leverage CSPs and SIs, because guess what? The volume and the scale that they bring, right? Enterprise don't have to go leverage leverage and build it up from a DIY standpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the answer and the solution that you know VMware and and uh, VMware Broadcom and Media have come up together is this phenomenal Gen AI platform what we call VMware Private AI Foundation with NVIDIA. Um, joint platform, it's now initially available as of, uh, you know, we made the announcement last week at G NVIDIA GPC, probably the most uh, most watched event in a while, right? Because NVIDIA is now the now such a such an important com company at this point. Uh, and if you look at what this uh, model is all about, uh, this platform is all about, from the very top, NVIDIA provides those four or five boxes you choose the top, NVIDIA RAG, NVIDIA GP operator, NIM, et cetera. They provide the capabilities to spin up private and secure Gen AI models, fine tune and customize uh, you know, large language models that are available. And those, if you look at the top, the foundation models, NVIDIA's fine tuned models, third party and community models, et cetera. And by third party, we mean the uh, you know, hugging face, etc. Mm -hmm. Those models can now be uh, fine-tuned, customized with your large, you know, your, your domain data, right? Your enterprise data to come up with, uh, you know, your own models which are specific to your business. And VMware's and NVIDIA provide a whole bunch of inbuilt inbuilt capabilities as part of their platform to give you the privacy and security to give enterprises the privacy and security, which is the big promise of VMware private, right? That's the one key most important one. Our customers are very concerned about privacy and that's why VMware private AI is phenomenal at you know, you know, giving enterprises the, the comfort that you have, your Gen AI models are private and secure. VMware's VCF, VMware Cloud Foundation, gives, provides the infrastructure layer um, and NVIDIA Enterprise and is gives all those capabilities to spin up you know, domain, uh, you know, fine-tuned, customized models. And those four capabilities in the top, the green layer, are part of NVIDIA Enterprise. NVIDIA NIM being the big announcement last week, which is basically a microservices that NVIDIA has announced for specific use cases. The cool part here is Jensen made the announcement at one o'clock PDT last week, specific time. And three o'clock, we made the announcement with that same uh, microservices, NVIDIA and NIM actually being part of this platform because we have a long partnership with NVIDIA, almost 10 plus years at this point. Mm. With AI specifically, VMware has been in, in partnership with NVIDIA for five years or so at this point. So we have a long partnership, a great partnership. Um, and, and so like we have a lot of experience and depth in this space as well. And finally, uh, you know, the, all the uh, big OEMs, uh, major OEM providers are supported as part of this platform. 
now obviously this is this is a compelling um solution here so let me just uh consider this from uh a stack perspective for a second so nvidia obviously is is really two main kind of components here the, the software um which is you know what you see in the boxes here like the operators and um then you have the hardware the the gpu and the physical hardware itself um do you still need things like uh, a subscription to the NVIDIA Global Catalog or AI Enterprise Catalog, whatever they're calling it these days, um, for you to be able to then pull down those models and applications that you want, like Hugging Face, for example? Uh, great question. NVIDIA Enterprise license is required. It does require the enterprise license for NVIDIA Enterprise, and that gives you the capability to pull down those models. VCS yeah. purchase is also required, right? And then there's the third, the blue layer that you see, the deep learning VM, vector databases, et cetera, catalog setup, GPU monitoring. Uh, no, actually, GPU monitoring also comes as part of VCF. Those three specific abilities are what we call the VMware private AI add-on on top of VCF, right? On top of VMware Cloud Foundation. So there's three different pieces here to, from a licensing perspective. NVIDIA Enterprise, VMware Cloud Foundation, and uh, the the private AI foundation, uh, the VMware private AI foundation add-on. Okay, cool. And and I guess the the private uh, AI add-on for Cloud Foundation, that's all kind of pre-packaged, simple deployment option. Um, does that come uh, ready for NVIDIA or does that kind of require, I'm just trying to think of the setup in my mind, you know, you deploy, BCF, you deploy NVIDIA Global Enterprise, you deploy your Kubernetes cluster. Um, you know, how 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 is the the private AI stuff packaged up with is it with Cloud Foundation, for example, or does it come as part of the NVIDIA deployment? What's the the uh the packaging look like? Uh, great question. So uh, the add-on comes bundled as part of ECF. However, once you buy the enterprise licenses, that's when that's when it gets turned on for you, right? So there's not extra deployments involved with that with the add-on. Uh, Nvidia Enterprise is a separate deployment, right? That that you have to purchase from Nvidia, and then you work very closely with us and Nvidia, right, to actually do the deployment. Okay. And I see, um, see mentioned there our, our, our favorite, um, you know, hardware suppliers, the Dells of the world, the HPEs, Lenovo's. Uh, where do they play in uh, to this this architecture? Uh, they're all supported platforms. Basically, at any, any point, there's uh, if you know some of these platforms, you know, all of these platforms have offerings jointly with Nvidia's GPUs bundled in, right? So that's that's the play there. Uh, so you have this phenomenal, uh, you know, hardware and server. For server OEMs, right? Uh, yeah. And you get GPUs bundled in, and on top of this, you get our software to make this phenomenal offering. So they're they're more kind of NVIDIA ready than they are, um, and and Cloud Foundation ready, obviously, than they are anything private AI ready. Uh, yes, great, great yeah. point. Uh, they provide the GPU readiness. They provide the VCF readiness. The privacy aspect comes from primarily from us and NVIDIA. Yeah, very cool. And initially available. So this means uh, limited availability, but availability. Is this yes. where you want like CSPs to work with VMware? Uh, you know, what, what does it actually mean for initial availability? What's your expectations? So initially available at this point means um, there's a very limited set of customers we'll be able to deploy. Um, at the end of the presentation, there's actually an access form that we have for um, uh, you know, if, if there's a lead, et cetera, that you want to send to us, right, to work with us. Um, initially, it's going to be available only through VMware, right? So at this point, I think for the CSPs, CSPs, not the SIs, right? SIs will be supported, right? And CSPs, it's more of, uh, you know, an awareness function today, uh, which we're here to talk about. When this platform becomes generally available, that's when we start opening up the gates, right? But at that point, we'll come back to you and, Kind of give you exactly what the bounds are still. At this point, it's sell from a sellability perspective. It's VMware. Sure. Okay. So I can see this is a, a great option. You know, our service providers are now getting on board basically with Cloud Foundation since the Broadcom acquisition and the portfolio uh, consolidation. 
and you know looking to build those extra services for their customers this is a great option to expand their horizons um, for their enterprise customers absolutely that makes complete sense okay all right fantastic um so the most important thing here is uh vmware cloud foundation uh gives you fast deployments right a traditional deployment where you have to do a do a DIY from a compute networking packaging etc and build every single piece can take minutes and sometimes days right um then when you do all of that there's still extra steps involved and there's a whole bunch of risk involved the key value that VMware Cloud Foundation provides is this ability to go go from start to finish in minutes right because it's a scalable bundled platform uh, you have a whole bunch of these compute networking storage, et cetera, functionalities already. And so that's the key value that going with VM, via VCS infrastructure provides. Now, yeah. And our key, service providers, by the way, love it because yes. VCF minimizes their configuration errors, which increases security, increases uptime, SLAs, et cetera. So it's a great solution for them. Absolutely. And, uh, if you think about VCF in general, right? Or GenEI in general, let's talk, start from there. GenEI at the end of the day is a special workload, right? It's a high-end workload. It has the same level of requirements as any key or complex workload or a big workload. It needs to be able to scale effectively. You need to be able to monitor it to the right level of you know, uh, consoles and you know, have the right level of visibility of what's going on at an operational level. You need to be able to upgrade, update, do things you know inside that uh, uh, workload easily, and you know at the end of the day you want to be able to plan your costs and capacity, right? Think about it comes with all Gen AI comes with all of those regular complex workload requirements. So this is where VMware Cloud Foundation really really shines, right? It's it's scalable, it's mass, you know, it's built for like massive scale. So you start small and you can go, go really big as well if you need. You have a whole bunch of these consoles already built inside VCF to be able to uh, you know, leverage uh, you know, the ability, ability to monitor what's going on inside, the ability to manage workloads. Uh, you know, workload optimization comes as built as part of you know, some of the uh, you know, pieces inside VCF. So really, really shines as a platform. That's the key thing to remember. Right. And that's why we're so excited about this new direction that, you know, we're going as a company as well. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, now, the next here is uh, NVIDIA Enterprise. I think we talked a little bit about that is, you know, if you look at the middle one, I want to focus on that for a second. You know, NVIDIA Enterprise is a massive platform, right? There's literally one particular software, right, NVIDIA Enterprise. Right, the NVIDIA core software, and then there's hundreds of third-party you know, software that's already built inside of it, right? Like are supported. So when you want to be doing want patching to be done, you want software upgrades to be done, you can think about the massive complexity that can get that, that can uh, come as part of it. And that's where NVIDIA Real Enterprise really shines, right? Is because you get this thing bundled, NVIDIA has a support structure. Right, uh, to be able to support it and for any upgrades, updates, things like that. It's built for basically massive scale again. It's cloud right. native, right? So you can easily do microservices, things of that nature in Indian enterprise, pull bundles and software uh, to generate your AI models. And, um, you know, because of again, not having to do this piecemeal approach for building Gen AI models and fine tuning customized Gen AI models, it, it's very cost effective as well for customers. I think there's, uh, I mean, the the applicability here as well for production grade is really important for enterprises. You know, if you're going to be running your business on these large language models and and AI um, solutions, then you need to have production grade support. And all of the apps that come out of the uh, AI enterprise catalog are supported by NVIDIA. Um, I believe is three years support with with all of them and patching support as well. Um, like you said, which is hundred percent needed for production. Let's let's not you know pretend it isn't. But the other thing that that's really cool about 
the software they release is it's tuned to the cards so you're going to get you know people often say well why should i go for nvidia uh, when i get the the apps you know on open source and just think about it from support do you really want your production app to be running on an open source component and also from performance you know nvidia are guaranteeing the tuned performance to their cards which is going to give you the best optimization and uh you know bang for your buck in terms of performance for your your uh your models absolutely and i think the key important thing to remember is future proofness right mm. it is the most important software from nvidia standpoint for ai and ai models right they're going to continuously add microservices to it they're going to add more software capabilities to it so yeah. as you build your Gen AI capabilities over the course of next one to three years or so, which is really where most enterprises are at this point, you have the comfort that guess what? Now you're going to have newer capabilities, a lot of large language model models continuously added by me. So that's the key other thing to remember. Got it. And yeah. So now finally, um, yeah. So so what is the overall story, right? VMware Private AI Foundation with NVIDIA unlocks Gen AI and unleashes productivity. Gen AI is hard, right? Uh, enterprise want help. And that's what we're here to make, make it easier. So we're really unlocking Gen AI for everybody. And the key here is massive amounts of productivity benefits, right? That's the most important thing that Gen AI brings to enterprises. The fact that you can just basically unleash a whole bunch of uh, productivity, uh, locked in doing redundant tasks, right? Uh, inside the enterprise. And there's examples of redundancy are all over the place from marketing to sales operations to you know, manufacturing supply chain. And so enabling these Gen AI models really unlocks this productivity, right? Uh, we talked a little bit about privacy and security compliance, et cetera. Actually a lot about it because we're private AI. Um, you know, simplifying Gen AI deployments and optimizing us. The fact that you have these capabilities already built inside NVIDIA Enterprise, VCF, uh, you know, the VCF add-on, like those four or five layer things that we're talking about, really simplifies Gen AI deployments and a lot, right? Um, and then finally, accelerating performance regardless of the selected LLM. Uh, performance is where VCF really shines, right? Because there's a whole bunch of op workload optimization, uh, you know, capabilities and workload placement capabilities that VCF has inside on hosts and clusters, which is where uh, you know, VMware Cloud Foundation really shines in giving you best performance. Similarly, uh, NVIDIA Enterprise is the same way. Uh, you know, it, it's set up to give you best performance for your Gen AI models as well. Um, and then finally, regardless of the selected LLM, uh, you will keep changing. Enterprise will keep adding more large language models. We understand that. The fact that you're going with two big experts gives you the ability to really get the best performance, regardless of whatever large language model the enterprise choose. Yeah, so it's, it's a great solution, um, you know, for our, our partners to offer to customers. And I think there's a huge opportunity here for service providers. I mean, you think about it, service providers are, you know, the, the data gravity. Uh, they hold the data already for many, many customers in their data centers directly. Now, customers, while you know, realizing there's a lot of hype with AI, there is a lot of useful things that AI can do, particularly Gen AI, um, realize also the challenges with getting um, a, a usable model up within the IT parameters that they operate. And I think that's where service providers can come and deliver their managed service expertise and if they have it in-house gen ai expertise and uh, nvidia application expertise to really simplify that whole journey even more right i mean private ai a lot of the stuff we're doing here is simplification for the customer but you know when you're still looking at resources and skills that's still where the customer you know needs help um, so this is a, a great operation uh, opportunity for not only just CSPs, but uh, GSIs, global SIs, like you said, uh, service integrators, service operators, um, and everyone in between, really. Absolutely. There's uh, 
So the phenomenal amount of space here for partners to really excel, right? Mm -hmm. And take take to market. Uh, so as we get into more in the general availability timeframe, I think that's where all the part partner opportunities will will really jump up. At this point, I think we're gonna give more of a keep keep you up, keep them up to speed, right? With what's going on. Um, yeah. so I think that's the key one important thing I want to mention. So if they want to learn more, right? We have a few resources for them. The VMware Private AI uh, or AIML page, vmware.com slash AIML. Uh, there's a launch blog that we released last week, which talks at length about each one of these capabilities, uh, about this platform in a lot more detail. And finally, initial availability request form that we're giving to basically uh, any enterprise who wants to uh, connect with us. Uh, you know, there's a uh, wonderful specialist team sitting on the back, back from our side who can sit and talk to customers and enterprises and kind of whip them out to saying, make sure that they're eligible, right? From a platform standpoint to be able to engage with us, right? So wanted to leave those three resources for the team here. Okay, great. Well, just check out the, the comments below. That's where the uh, the links will be for this information. Um, Shobit, thank you very much for your time today. It's been really interesting to see the progression of the solution over the last few months and really happy to see it's come to initial availability. Can't wait till we have availability for our service providers because I know a lot of them are going to be watching this thinking, when's it coming for us? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, we're absolutely excited, excited as well. And uh, want to continue partnering with our CSPs and our CSIs here. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Shobit. Take care. Thanks a lot, Guy.